Hi everyone, I'm Elaine Quijano. Thank you for joining us. Hurricane Dorian is slamming parts of the northwestern Bahamas. The storm made landfall as a Category 5 storm in the Abaco Islands Sunday afternoon. It is the strongest hurricane in modern records for the area. The storm's maximum sustained winds have increased to 185 miles per hour, and forecasters say a life-threatening storm surge of up to 23 feet is possible there. Well, in case you haven't guessed by now, Dorian is as much a manufactured political storm as it is a geoengineered hurricane. The climate change and carbon trading billionaires are prepared to propagandize this to the hilt. And like the neuralizer in the movie Men in Black, the memory of Jeffrey Epstein has been erased from the public mind. You've always heard that the eye of the storm is calm. Now look at the rotation of the clouds inside the eye of Dorian and how they rotate nearly as fast as the eye wall with 175 mile an hour winds. Next we see what appears to be aerosol sprayed inside the eye of the storm. All of those long thin clouds appear to be aircraft aerosols. When you run the video in reverse, you can see how the trails become longer and shorter as the frame rocks back and forth. Actually, aluminum dust is called for in the Solarian Corporation microwave satellite patent designed for weather control and mitigation of hurricanes. Any technology that can weaken a hurricane can be reverse engineered to make it stronger. Dorian was almost stalled at Elbow K with 185 mile an hour winds at 2 p.m. on Sunday. The barometric pressure at landfall was an ominous 911 or 911 millibars, an interesting number with the 18th anniversary of that false flag event coming on Wednesday after next. If the storm continues on a straight path into Florida, it will run directly into Trump's mansion at Mar Largo in Palm Beach. So is the deep state putting Trump under pressure to hop on board the global warming train? Maybe so. Links in the description box for the Solarin weather control patent and more. Hi everyone, I'm Elaine Quijano. Thank you for joining us. Hurricane Dorian is slamming parts of the northwestern Bahamas. The storm made landfall as a Category 5 storm in the Abaco Islands Sunday afternoon. It is the strongest hurricane in modern records for the area. The storm's maximum sustained winds have increased to 185 miles per hour, and forecasters say a life-threatening storm surge of up to 23 feet is possible there. CBS News weather producer David Parkinson has been tracking the storm. So, David, what do we know right now? I mean, that 23-foot storm surge, to put that in perspective, that is beyond a two-story building. Yeah. Um, it is. Those are islands that are maybe three or four feet high. So um, that is as life-threatening and as dangerous as you get as a situation. Um, and the fact that we have a storm at 185, which is... Uh, pretty much in the top five for storms, period, in the Atlantic, Gulf, or, or Caribbean. Um, that puts it in such rarefied air that the destructive power of this storm um, that we have right now is four times what it was yesterday. Oh it is the equivalent of at least an EF4 tornado over an area uh, for an extended period of time that could be a day or two. I mean, that's the problem is if this storm, in fact, does not move, uh, it is going to just keep pounding the same places. Usually a hurricane gets a move on and you're only in the eye wall for an hour or two. That's not the case. So if we take a look at the graphics that we're, we have in terms of your um, actual eye wall, you can see it just crossed right over the center. That, there it is right there, mm -hmm. right over Marsh Harbor. So uh, they have a, a nice window where they're in the eye and then they're just going to absolutely get smacked by the worst winds imaginable on this storm. So 185 mile an hour winds, that is the latest. It's still about 200 miles east to west Palm Beach and it is moving west at 7. It needs to slow down at some point. That's the problem because here's the deal. This wind field is going to get closer and closer to the Florida coast as you go into Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. How close it gets has everything to do with the track. So when we take a look at what that track looks like, uh, the key thing that you're going to notice here is this is going to stay a Category 5 as it makes that pass very close to the U.S. The skinny red line is the center of the track. It is the area where, in order to minimize their error, they put it in. So that is not to say that is the best guess. Anywhere in the cone is possible, which means West Palm Beach is in the cone. 
Stewart is in the cone. Vero Beach is in the cone. So all of those places by no means can let their guard down. Even though the center line is offshore, they are very much in play for a landfall. Then it makes its track further north. And again, you can see eastern Florida is still very much in the cone by Wednesday morning through Daytona, through Jacksonville. And then as we continue to move up towards Georgia and the Carolinas, all of those places are still very much in play for later on in the week. So we see this cone based on what we know right now. How much of a threat is this to the U.S. mainland? It is a very serious threat. There is a reason why they, we are, I can't remember uh, up until now having to wait so long for storm surge guidance, for evacuation warnings, and it's because we really don't know what's going on. Here's the problem with this storm. It's very uncertain. You've got high pressure that's sort of locking it in place. Mm -hmm. There it is there, right? It's cocooning it. The question is, how far west does it go? How far west does it drift? And then when can it finally clear? So at some point, the ridge of high pressure will start to sort of break down, and what will end up happening uh, is there will be a chance for it to move north. But we don't know where that exact time is going to be, and there is a 24 to 48 hour window where we don't know. And so the difference, a one mile an hour difference, in two days is 50 miles. That is everything between having a glancing blow and a landfall. So there is a lot of uncertainty still in play here, but here, this is sort of the dire case. Let's just say we have uh, a landfall. This is what it might look like. Here's our future model that shows you, you can see the storm center is just offshore and then it makes that pass towards Melbourne and makes that landfall. That is your worst case scenario. That would be Tuesday into Wednesday. So that's why it's so critical that you people start making their plans now. A better case scenario keeps the storm offshore. Mm -hmm. You can see right there all that heavy rain over Freeport in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. But you can see there's still some impacts along the coast. It's just not as bad. So if you are in one of these southeastern states here, what should you be doing right now? So what you need to be doing right now is finishing up your hurricane preparations. Uh, if there's an evacuation order that's uh, in effect, you need to be heeding it. Uh, again, we just have such uncertainty here that I, I can't give you guidance in terms of exactly when or where. I just can't. I, I would be, and, and anyone who tells you that they can is lying. Mm -hmm. um, there is a range of possibilities that we won't know until tomorrow which is going to come through. So finish up your preparations if you're in Florida. Um, if you're in northern Florida, you're, you've still got an extra day or so. But the worst impacts of this storm would start probably Tuesday morning. So Monday is your last totally clear day. It might be raining towards the end of the day, but by and large, you've got a totally clear day. Tuesday is the day where the impact will really start to get felt. And then depending on that track, Wednesday could be a really rough day as well. Further up the coast in Georgia and the Carolinas, you start making your preparations uh, now. You have until Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, mm -hmm. and then things get really nasty for Thursday. All right, but time is of the essence, right? Absolutely. David Parkinson, David, thank you very much. Sure thing.